Hello and welcome to the Masonic Temple Library and Museum of Pennsylvania, located here in Philadelphia. Today, in commemoration of President's Day, we'd like to take you through the museum and show, show you some of the artifacts that we have that pertain to our various American presidents, both Masonic presidents and non-Masonic presidents. For instance, what I'm holding here in my hands is a piece of embroidery done to commemorate the passing of George Washington in the year 1799. The embroidery piece was probably done in the year 1800 right here in Philadelphia and the image on this depicts Columbia as an allegorical representation of the United States in mourning over the loss of our first president. George Washington was a Mason. He was a Mason in Fredericksburg Lodge number no. four in Fredericksburg, Virginia. And next we're going to be showing you something that pertains to his Masonic service in that lodge. What I'm holding in my hands right now is a solid 24 karat gold invitation that was sent to President William McKinley to attend a Knight Templar event in San Francisco, California in 1901. President McKinley was also a Freemason and was also a member of the Knights Templar, which is known as one of the appendant bodies of Freemasonry. This was a gift to the museum and library from Brother John Wanamaker, a prominent Philadelphia businessman who is locally known for his chain of department stores that were open in the late 19th century. Brother Wanamaker was very active in the construction of this temple and very active in Freemasonry in and around the Philadelphia area. Between the years 1948 and 1952, the White House had to undergo extensive renovations to bring it up to date. It was during that time that then President Harry S. Truman, a former Grand Master of Masons in his native state of Missouri, removed the building block from the White House as it was being renovated and sent one to each Grand Lodge throughout the United States with a letter signed by the president himself explaining what it was that he was making them a gift of. The stone that we received here in the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania can be seen here and you'll notice that on its surface there is a Masonic mark engraved. Each stonemason would mark the stone that they worked on with a personal mark so that if there was any question about its quality or it was found to be flawed it would be brought back to their attention. What I'm holding here is a certificate that was produced by Fredericksburg Lodge number no. four in the year 1852 and presented to Washington Lodge of Baltimore, Maryland. And what it does is it depicts several Masonic emblems and also records the Masonic record of George Washington, his entered apprentice, fellow craft, and master mason date, uh, degrees dates. This was done for the 100th anniversary of George Washington becoming a Freemason. It's unfortunate that Fredericksburg Lodge No. 4, George Washington's Lodge, lost virtually all of their records from 1865 back during the Battle of Fredericksburg and the Civil War, in which case the town was bombarded and the lodge lost everything. So this copy might possibly be one of the only ones left in the United States. Although we do have one other here that is not on display that was made for a lodge here in Pennsylvania. In the year 1902, a 150th anniversary celebration was held here in this building to commemorate the anniversary of George Washington's becoming a Freemason in 1752. This invitation was mailed out to then President Theodore Roosevelt, who was also active Freemason in his lodge in Oyster Bay, Long Island, New York. Now, as visitors arrived with this invitation, they were instructed to fill in the back before entering the building with their name, their lodge information, their state, that type of thing. And of course, here we have where President Roosevelt signed his name and filled in all of the information. Um, this is a tradition to keep records for a Masonic Lodge meeting so that you know for the future who all was in attendance at the meeting. Between the years 2016 and 2017, the Masonic Temple here in Philadelphia remodeled the Grand Ballroom and made a number of additions and improvements to the previous structure. At that time, these four magnificent presidential stained glass windows, which you see to my left and my right, were installed here in our building. Not all of the presidential related documents that we have here in the Masonic Temple Library and Museum are on public display. So what I've done today is to bring four selected documents out of our archives so we can share them with you. The first document here dates from 1807. It is a maritime document that would have been carried by an Amer American merchant sea captain who was carrying goods to neutral ports. This was important because at the time the Napoleonic Wars were going on between Great Britain and France. So in case another country's navy stopped them to be sure that they weren't supplying any kind of war goods to the other country, it was signed by the presidents of the United States that said that they were not. 
the President of the United States in this case, who signed, is Thomas Jefferson. And as an added bonus, it is countersigned by another future President of the United States, James Madison, as Secretary of State. Our next document has only been in our possession for a little bit over 48 hours. It was at that time that Lodge 43 in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, brought all of their records dating back to the 18th century to deposit here in our archives for safekeeping. This lodge happens to be the home lodge of James Buchanan, future 15th President of the United States. However, in 1815, he was still a young man and he petitioned their lodge for membership. What you're going to see here is the entry for the lodge minutes for December of 1816, when he was balloted upon and was unanimously approved for membership. His name appears several other places throughout this document when he went through other Masonic degrees, the Entered Apprentice degree, the Fellow Craft degree, and the Master Mason's degree. Our next artifact is a copy of the Ulster County Gazette from January 4th of 1800. Now, if you look at the front, it looks like many typical other newspapers from the very early 19th or late 18th century. But when you open it up and you get to the inside, you'll notice the heavy black lines that run around the margins and the columns. This was because the country was in mourning at just learning of the death of President George Washington. And there are several articles in here about his interment at the tomb in Mount Vernon. And there is a poem here that a young woman wrote in his memory. And finally, we come to this. This is a letter that was sent by General George Washington to the Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons of Pennsylvania, thanking them for congratulating him upon being elected President of the United States. Now, we believe the letter was written by one of his secretaries, but the signature is unquestionably that of General and President George Washington. And the final stop on our tour today is to view this. This is an original oil painting of General Andrew Jackson as he would have appeared during the War of 1812 in his military service at the time when this painting was done by the Philadelphia artist Charles Wilson Peale. Peale, the famous American artist, at one time had a studio here in Philadelphia. Unfortunately, we don't know too much about the provenance of this painting. However, it has been in the possession of the Grand Lodge for quite some time. And General Jackson was a Freemason in his home state of Tennessee. This concludes our tour today of the presidential artifacts which are housed here in the Museum and Library of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, located in Philadelphia.